Hey folks, um, so I got the AC30 working and uh, I need to wait for some supplies to show up so I can restore the tapes that are used with it so that I can get those archived. So I figured I'd move on to the next stage which is to bring up the MF68 disk system. You'll notice that uh, something has changed in the system here. There is now a controller in slot 6 of the SS30 bus. That is a DC2, Disk Controller 2, uh, made by SWTPC, uh, specifically for use with the mini floppy disk system. Uh, kind of hard to see here, there is a floppy drive here. Uh, it's a full height uh, Wango uh, 82, I think is what it's called. Wangco 82. Um, it, since it won't show up very well on the uh, on the actual device, that's what this thing looks like. The whole door flips open. Uh, I have two of these drives that came with this system. One of them is the one that's installed, which works most of the time. But up here at the uh, the top of the disc door, there are a couple of little plastic pins that ride inside of a thing there for the chute to go, you know, the, 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 the lid to go up into it, and they're broken. So if you don't get it loaded in there just right, it doesn't clamp the spindle down just right. It doesn't get the the head all the way down on the media so I'm not going to open it up and show it to you. Um, the other one uh, was removed by the previous owner uh, because he had some trouble with it using the machine in modern times. Uh, he happened to find Michael Holley's instructions on how to put a three and a half inch floppy into your uh, into your machine and that's exactly what he's done here. Uh, I think if he had decided to keep this machine a little longer, he might have converted completely over to uh, to the 720K drives. I'm um, not sure how much of this capacity is actually usable by the system, but it obviously has more uh, available disk space on it than, than a standard floppy. Um, and I'm sure that his version of Flex has been patched for, for exactly that. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention in the previous video is uh, how the bus in this system works. So each of these slots are the SS50 bus. Uh, they have access to all the signals. Each of these slots are the uh, SS30 bus. This is where your peripheral cards plug in. This is where your CPU memory cards plug in. There were a couple of odd peripherals that actually went on to uh, the SS50 bus, but they are, uh, as I understand, incredibly uncommon and rare. So. The, uh, the interesting thing about this is you'll notice, you know, 50 is how many pins are connected there. 30 is how many pins are connected here. Um, this machine predates the Apple II by nearly a year, uh, actually technically a little more than a year, and it also has a slot 0 through slot 7 uh, uh, identification with I.O. addressed slots, similar to the way that the, uh, the Apple II works. The other thing that I thought was kind of interesting is that slot 6 in both the Apple II and the SWTPC uh, 6800 is the disk controller slot. So one of the interesting things about that, I'll show you here in just a sec, I'm going to fire up the machine. You'll notice that the floppy drive wakes up. I already had the floppy unit powered up. Um, forgot to turn on the terminal here. So as soon as this guy comes, on, comes alive, You'll see that uh, that we've come up in swap bug, kind of like what you would expect, because swap bug is technically the it is the ROM monitor, so it's technically the machine's operating system, but it doesn't really know anything about disks. So just like in the other video, you know, we've we've got this going here. Um, in a lot of these earlier machines that you can add a disk to you set the disk controller to a memory address and then you jump into the, uh, uh, the, the memory address for the ROM routine to boot the, uh, the disk operating system of choice for that machine. Since the slot assignments in this thing are, each slot is, is a, its own I.O. address um, and the slot assignment for the disk controller is always 6, all you have to do is press D. And when you do, if you can hear that. And so it has come up and loaded Flex 1.0 and given me the Flex prompt. So if I do something like um, 
Let's let's reassign the drives here because the three and a half has all the stuff on it that I want to play with. It also has a copy of the system on it, so that if we need to go back to the system, we've got that. So we set the system drive and the work drive both to drive one. And now if I do a directory or a cat, um, oh, it's not installed on this drive, so maybe I gotta do a cat to get the listing. Uh, Dir will give you a lot more information, like the beginning track and sector and stuff like that. Uh, cat gives you less information, but still tells you what's on the drive. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run Lunar Lander and see if I can win again. I, I've played this on so many different machines and there's different versions of the code around. Um, I can't say that I know uh, the, the specific history of this particular program, but I think it actually predates microcomputers and uh, had run on basic on some minis and stuff predating this, this specific era. But uh, the first time I ever played it was in the late 70s or very early 80s on a TRS-80 Model 1. Uh, my granddad's old TRS-80 Model 1, which is the machine that's responsible for getting me interested in computers. And uh, until today, I had never won a game. So let's load up Disk Basic here. And we'll just take a little bit. And we're ready. And we're going to load one. Oops. I need to... Uh, that's not going to work. I haven't set up my uh, my backspace key correctly yet, so let's see. Load Lun Lidder One. All right, run. Oh, why not? Let's get the instructions. It's really short. about 100 all right we're slowing down we're still descending we still got a lot of fuel left I'll burn another hundred and another hundred I keep this up I'm going to run out of fuel but that's okay I still need to slow down quite considerably slow down too much more or we won't descend fast enough and we'll still run out of fuel so I'm burning just enough to maintain velocity here and we're descending 85 feet per second or per turn or whatever that is give or take give or take because you know Velocity is remaining the same, but there's other things being factored in here. Oh, sorry. I'm watching the computer screen instead of watching uh, the, mo the, the viewfinder on the camera. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let it speed up a little bit by burning a little less fuel. Alright. Now we'll maintain that. I get the sneaky suspicion that I'm not going to win this time. way now
All right, wish me luck. Oh. Oh, I think we're going to crash. <laughs> well, that wasn't too bad. 72 hours is better than only having two hours of oxygen left. But it wasn't a landing A-OK, -okay, which is what I got earlier. So uh, there we are. And you can jump back out to DOS. And uh, uh, there's other stuff on this disc, but I haven't really even looked at it other than it's scrolling by. So anyhow, it's 11 minutes, so I'm going to let it go. See ya. Bye.